Hey, it's Joseph here. If you have been following my channel, you probably noticed that my background has changed. It is because I have moved home and I suppose you guys could hear me better since the microphone is closer to my mouth. Anyways, that's not why you are here. Let's get on with the content. I have been searching for a good production monitor that suits my daily task for a long time. And in fact, I think I just came across one. And it is MSI Prestige PS341WU. It is a quite a mouthful and this is actually an empty box. So let me just put this back. It is also the same series as the MSI laptop that I have recently reviewed. So if you haven't watched that video, please go ahead and watch that video. I'll leave a link in the description. They are both meant for creative professionals and designers like ourselves. But since the name is quite a mouthful, let's just call it MSI Prestige Monitor. It is so big that it is hard to fit on this desk and show it to you. But this is what it looks like and how big it is. And as you guys can see, it is hovering at, I would say about 34.5 inches. I also don't want to touch the screen of it, but I also don't want to talk over the monitor to you. So I'm going to put this aside so I can do this a lot easier. So I realize how difficult it is to do a large monitor video since I just can't really fit that in any sort of angle. It has been more than a month since I had this monitor in my studio, so I have gotten fairly acquainted with it. Whilst I was provided with this unit, here are my very honest opinions based on my experience with this monitor. There's actually a lot of aspects you need to consider when choosing a monitor. I intend to make a separate video in the near future to help you choose the right monitor for architecture. But for now, I really wanted to just review this monitor for you since I think this one takes a lot of boxes. The things that we are going to consider, screen size and ratio, resolution, color accuracy, refresh rate, ports and features, price, mounting system, and design. Screen size and ratio is probably the one that sticks out the most. If you look at the spec of this monitor, they say it is 34 inches diagonally and it is 21 by 9 ratio. 21 by 9 ratio basically means it is ultra wide, hence why it is really long and you can see that it is being cut off on the edge. You saw how wide it was then sort of the regular monitors that you see. I think 34 inches is sort of the sweet spot for productivity where it is not too big nor too small. If you actually go for a larger screen, then from one corner to the other, you're gonna have to turn your head to find the right content. And if you go for a smaller screen, then you're gonna miss out on the screen real estate that can show you useful information. And because my camera lens is quite wide, it may look a bit distorted and you may think it is curved, but just to let you know, it is not curved. And it actually is a good thing for productivity. I personally find curved monitor cool, but quite deceiving. Architects and designers, we need to draw straight lines when we are doing the drawings. And judging a line that is just slight out of square on a curved monitor is just plain difficult. If the monitor was actually much bigger and wider than this, then it would kind of make sense for it to sit on a curve so it makes your eye travel distance a lot easier. But for this size and this monitor's very purpose, I find the straight monitor to be more useful. Next one, the resolution is definitely another number that is going to stick out. To clarify, this one is actually 5K. It is about 1000 pixels more than the 4K screens that you are used to. More specifically, it is actually 5K across and 2K top and bottom. In a regular widescreen monitor will be 16 by 9 ratio. And if it is 1080p monitor, it means 1920 pixels across and 1080 pixels down. And if 1080p resolution becomes 21 by 9 ratio, then it becomes 2560 across and 1080 pixels down again. And if it is a 4K monitor with 16 by 9 wide ratio, then it is going to be 3840 across and 2160 down. 
and that's why it is sometimes called 4K by 2K resolution. And then when that monitor is stretched to be ultra wide screen 21 by 9 ratio, then it becomes this. And that is why this monitor is 5K by 2K monitor. This amount of pixels will basically allow you to see a lot of information at the same time. All the lines and text are going to be much sharper than the other screens that you are used to. Clear text and lines are definitely appreciated in the AEC industry. Across the entire screen, I can just dock information on the either side and basically see the model in the middle and it is basically wide open. And I can have multiple windows open, tile all of them, and then I can still make out what each view says on the drawing. And in SketchUp, you can dock a lot of toolbars on one side and then have the tray on the other and still utilize a lot of viewports for you to see the model that you are working on right now. And inside of Premiere Pro, you should be able to see a very long timeline at the bottom and then still see 1080p video on the corner with its full resolution. In my previous 1080p ultra wide, this was simply not possible and I just couldn't really have 1080p video played on one corner and pick out all the details that I am seeing. In fact, I still have this monitor but it is not as big as this one and does not have as much resolution. I must mention, however, higher resolution is not necessarily always the best. More pixels means that your computer actually has to work harder to push out those pixels. And depending on your computer's performance and the complexity of the task that you are doing at that very moment, actually your machine can struggle if you are trying to do those tasks with high resolution monitors. So I would recommend this monitor only if you are equipped with such hardware that can handle a lot of pixels. The next one that I want to mention is the color accuracy of this monitor. Color accuracy is something that is often overlooked, but I think it is important for any professionals who rely on color, obviously. These monitors are in fact calibrated individually before being shipped from the factory. And this is actually the color calibration report that was inside of the packaging. And here I can see the color gamut for sRGB is 139.8% of area and then 100% coverage of it. And Adobe RGB is 103.7% and the coverage is 89.6%. And the stated 100% sRGB means it is capable of showing you accurate colors compared to non-professional monitors that you see out there. And this monitor is also advertised as 450 nit brightness so it can push out quite a lot of brightness in a bright environment as well. And the next thing that you should be aware when buying a monitor is actually refresh rate. When it comes to a gaming monitor, you are usually expected to have very high refresh rate somewhere in the neighborhood of 144 Hz and also very fast response time for a fast and smooth gaming experience. However, those things do come at a cost. So the manufacturers, if they're trying to get very fast monitors, they're gonna try and sacrifice the color accuracy, which is something that you may value a lot more as a professional. So I'd rather pick the color accuracy and resolution over high refresh rate or fast response time monitors. So do watch out for those as you don't want to pay for something that you're not gonna need or utilize. All in all, we're just trying to get our work done, making sure the pictures are not yellower nor bluer than what it seems like, and we don't have to worry about killing zombies faster or killing each other faster inside of a game. For professional usage, 60 hertz of a monitor will be completely adequate, and if it is faster than that, your computer is having to do a lot more work than necessary, and you have paid for something that you're not really going to utilize, and if it is slower than 60 hertz, then you may experience some sluggishness just because the frame is lesser than what you're used to. If you actually have connected your computer to a TV and they are usually about 30 hertz and you will feel that it is sort of a sluggish when you're trying to work with the TV because it is lesser refresh rate and response time. So 
it is best to keep at 60 Hertz and the regular computer monitors. And whenever you are shopping for a monitor, you really should look for ports and features of that specific monitor. All three modern standard of display ports, HDMI and USB-C connection is possible. And if your machine actually has Thunderbolt, then you can just connect via USB-C as well. And I can connect to P65 simply using that port right here. And actually HDMI port does not cover enough of bandwidth to have 5K by 2K resolution. So it is best advised to connect via display port so you have the maximum amount of refresh rate along with the resolution. And by the way, the box includes all of those cables that I have mentioned, therefore you don't really need to go out and buy more cables, which is a good thing. And in my case, I have just connected a display port to my computer and I also have connected one USB-A type and the other end is actually USB-B type, which connects to the monitor. And basically that turns this monitor into USB hub. Therefore, I have one USB-3 type A port on the back and two extra USB three type A port on the side, including the audio jacks for headphone and the microphone. So I just connect my keyboard and a mouse dongle on the side so that they stay connected. And on top of the USB ports, there's gonna be a SD card reader. I have a small complaint to make. If I push in the SD card, I can't not really take it out. Maybe that's not really a concern for you if you have tiny little fingers or I may be just doing this really wrong. Anyways, the included USBs are are really easy to access therefore I end up connecting my external hard drives or USB sticks whenever I need to get those data off of those cards into my computer and they are fast since they are USB 3. And please note that this monitor does not include built-in speakers and this monitor can work as a sound pass-through where you can input the audio source on the back and then you can connect your choice of speaker on its side. I personally don't really need a set of speakers as I rely on headphones to listen to music and keep out distraction and if you're the type of person who really cares about the song quality then you probably have your own set of speakers that is really good so I think that was the adequate choice of MSI about this monitor and obviously the price is a huge factor in choosing a monitor and whilst I am aware that some of you out there who doesn't really care about the price all that much but I personally do so I think a good justification against the value of the product needs to be made before making a purchase. And currently on Amazon early 2020 this monitor is going for $9.99 and that certainly is not cheap and it is not for my wallet either. But because I can rely on a single monitor to do all the tasks and it increases the workable area so much that I think there is a good justification for me to purchase this monitor for myself. And in fact, there's not that many high resolution monitors that are meant for professionals like ourselves. They're usually all for gaming and high refresh rates and just really big monitor that doesn't really have color accuracy. So I can really see how this holds its value on its place. When purchasing a monitor, you should also consider the mounting system. Gotta make sure that this monitor fits your mounting system that you already have. You may not have any sort of mounting system and just kind of rely on the monitor stand that it ships with. By the way, the monitor stand is really nice. It is constructed with metal and is just clean. It actually allows you to increase the height of it without much force and I can just kind of do that all day and actually turn this monitor to the perfect angle that I need it to and I can tilt this up and down as well. So it does have a very good monitor stand. However, if you decide to mount this onto monitor arms that you already have, it does have a VESA mount. Therefore, you can just mount this onto the existing monitor arm that you have. Just be mindful of its weight as it is heavier than a normal monitor since it is quite big. And let's also look at the design of this monitor. You've been staring at the front part of it, but it actually has a lot on the back as well. 
as I will be staring at the front of the monitor rather than behind. This didn't really matter as much, but if you're a type of person who cares about what your monitor looks like from the other person who may be standing or sitting in front of you, then here's what it is. It is white, clean, simple, it has a dragon logo on its corner, and has this sort of accent of silver and gold, rose gold maybe? Actually this part comes with a cover as well. So. So if you really care about the aesthetics and conscious about what you look like, then you can do that as well. But I kind of like the utilitarian aspect of it, therefore I keep it removed. And there's also a bracket that you can use to tidy up all of your wires. However, I just really wasn't bothered to do all of that since I keep my desk not as organized, unfortunately. Now you can leave a comment about how much you don't appreciate about my untidiness of the studio. And I think that pretty much sums up my experience and opinion about this monitor after having to spend about a month with it. If you are also interested in buying this monitor, simply search MSI Prestige Monitor then you should be able to find. However, I would be grateful if you were to go down to the description and follow the Amazon affiliated link so that I get a little bit of revenue off of your purchase, although it doesn't cost you anything extra. I really have been enjoying this monitor. I can really focus on working rather than trying to find the perfect monitor for myself. All the extra pixels that this monitor offers is much more pleasant to look at all the lines are much more crisp it satisfy my OCD actually and whenever I do renderings on this monitor the experience is a lot more immersive since it's much larger and higher resolution if you have enjoyed this content please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos and thank you so much for watching as always I'll see you next time bye